Hi everyone. I'm uh, staying here in this traveler's hotel, this business hotel. I've got this kombucha. And I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the politics of distance. Uh, I'm not going to give away my exact location. I think if you look at some of the videos, you might get an idea. I'm outside of the United States and that's given me, um, you know, not only a lot of time to think, but also the opportunity to take, you know, alternate perspectives in terms of assessing the current U.S. political situation. Uh, I'm still in contact with a lot of my friends over in the United States. I talk to them over Twitter. I talk to them on Clubhouse. Um, and, you know, it's really weird because when you move uh, away from the United States, even just for a temporary amount of time, uh, the sort of constant political bickering and discourse, uh, it does sort of get away from you a little bit in terms of its salience because it just, uh, the distance itself just means that you don't feel as uh, quite as attached uh, to the sort of, you know, whatever controversy uh, is in the news and is getting everybody all riled up. That being said, I still, of course, uh, you know, have a dog in that fight. I care much, very much about the state of U.S. politics, I'm not some sort of permanent expat who's just, you know, abandoning my posts or anything like that. Um, but I did want to just talk to you guys a little bit about how this trip uh, has sort of informed my view on um, thinking about politics, the problem with politics, and, uh, you know, reformation, and what to do with a state that is in decline. Um, so, first of all, I, I just wanted to make a point about the nature of politics and reason, which is that it's very difficult to actually reason about politics if you are busy being enmeshed in every, you know, day-to-day -day struggles and conflicts and whatever kind of drama is getting stirred up uh, all around you. This has been something that, you know, all political philosophers have talked about from the beginning of, uh, of time, which is basically that, you know, if you really want to be able to reason about politics, you do need to in some way be removed, right? The philosopher reasons from up on high and then comes down uh, to be with the people. <clears throat> And hopefully share some of what he's what he has figured out and some of what he's learned. And the problem with being a you know everyday political engagement is that you get caught up into uh, basically the passions, right? You get caught up in the sway and the fervor of the moment and the things that you're passionate about, and it clouds your judgment, right? You need uh, you need steady, calm, uh, collect um, collected thinking and space and time away from the everyday struggles in order to think about problems uh, clearly, not to be overcome with emotion. And so this is a perpetual problem and it's sort of a perennial uh, tension right, within political philosophers, which is you can't really be both the philosopher and the politician at the same time. You, you kind of do need to be one or the other. Uh, that being said, it's not as if political philosophy doesn't have uh, its own, you know, applied uh, field. There's certainly a lot of applications to be done. It's not merely, um, if anything, it's one of the more pragmatic fields of, of all of philosophy, because it's not merely about thinking uh, about abstractions. It's really about engaging uh, or, I guess, intermediating between philosophy and reason and the everyday concerns and um you know, issues of human scale political life and a community. Um, so in that way, political philosophy is really an, uh, an intermediary, right? It mediates between the realm of philosophy, that is the realm of ideas, and the, uh, the realm of, uh, of practicality, right? The, the realm of materials. So, um, you know, it's useful to get that distance uh, not only because it gives you time to think, it allows you to be calm enough so you're not just driven by your limbic system all the time, um, but it also gives you a little bit of a perspective on the, you know, the parochial or peculiar issues to your polity, right? So you can start to see some, through travel, you can start to see, you know, some universals uh, that appear in different places, you go to different places, you see how their society works, you see that some things are basically the same everywhere you go, and there are some things that maybe, uh, you know, your polity is simply doing 
uh, not out of any, uh, out of a, uh, out of pure reason, but out of, you know, habit, right? Out of um, sort of historical contingency, right? And, and this gives you an opportunity to rethink some of these, uh, some of these habits of your own society uh, from first principles. Um, so getting a global perspective is also quite useful. Uh, that being said, I don't think it's useful to um, separate yourself completely, right? I don't think you should hide away. I don't think you should be a hermit. I don't think you should expatriate or abandon your country. The fact of the matter is um, you have a political community that you're born into. Um, it's you know entirely somewhat uh, accidental or rather contingent that you're born in a particular place in a particular time, but ultimately you belong more to that place than you're going to belong to any other place. And yeah, you can pick up, you can move, you can even gain citizenship, you know, in another polity, but really is that polity going to perceive you as being one of them? I think maybe there are a few places where uh, you could get most of that, but in general, it's, it's quite rare. It's quite rare that you change citizenship and then are treated as a full citizen, as a complete member of that community. Maybe your children or grandchildren uh, might be able to achieve something like that. But in most cases, uh, you'll always be sort of an outsider um, within uh, a place like that. And, you know, maybe you feel like a little bit of an outsider inside of your own political community. But I would just say that your own political community, political community is probably the one place where you belong the most. Um, so, if you're not going to totally separate yourself, if you're not going to try to run away from the problem, then what is the use, you know, beyond this, I talked about getting a global perspective, I talked about calming the passions, uh, what is the use of sort of spending, what is, or I guess, the justification for spending this time away? Like, aren't you a hypocrite, right? If you're, if you're saying that you care about problems in your own political community, then why did you leave that community? That is a charge that you're always going to have to face, right? And the answer to that from a strategic perspective is that you wanted to basically get away to, it, it's similar to a fight, right? You, you back away into a corner, you recollect yourself, you gather your strength, you gather resources maybe even as well, and then you return, you re-enter the fray, you re-enter the fight in order to uh, not only bring with back what you've learned, maybe you're stronger than before because you've had time to recoup, uh, to build up resources, to do whatever. And this makes you actually more of a boon to your community and to solving those problems than they were before. And I see that as uh, very similar to what I'm doing right now, which is basically, you know, I'm taking some time away outside of the United States. Um, you know, I'm doing business over here. I'm doing a number of other things over here. But primarily, I'm getting the opportunity to gain something, to strengthen myself, and then return to the United States and re-enter the fray uh, in a much more confident, much more prepared manner, having thought through these problems, having garnered some resources myself, having prepared um, for, for, for the eventual fight. Um, and the other thing too to remember is that going into something voluntarily from a psychological perspective is very different than going into something uh, involuntarily, right? So, if you have a, a stress response, if you look at the stress response of the body, something that is seen as an involuntary threat is something that's external to them, in which you have very little agency. Well, that's actually very, very damaging to the body, right? The stress response that happens is basically similar to a prey response when you view a stressor as uh, involuntarily imposed on you. Whereas if you view a stressor as being voluntarily imposed, as something that you went for yourself, well, then it's more of a challenge, right? It, it's not so much that you're being preyed upon so much as you are uh, you are the predator, right? You're on the hunt and you're, you're choosing to go forward and to take on that temporary stressor in order to make yourself stronger, in order to get some sort of advantage, in order to get the goal. Um, so shifting away from your own political context for a period of time in order to gain resources uh, also takes you um, psychologically and temperamentally um, away from the uh, being at the affect, uh, the effect, sorry, rather, of, um, of the events that are going on. And because you have the opportunity to choose when you're going to re-enter, that then becomes, again, a conscious decision that you're making. You have now decided that you're strong enough to go back onto the hunt 
um, rather than being the prey who's just sort of, you know, living in the valley and getting, you know, <laughs> having hawks swoop in from above and uh, strike them uh, at a moment's notice. Um, now, there are some other dangers uh, that I think are going to be uh, concerning for people living in the United States in the near future, um, you know, sort of the short to medium term, I'd say next 10 years or so, because we're just going to be going through a, a very tumultuous time. Um, and I'll get into some of that, uh, some of those issues later, things about stochastic violence, things about uh, various kinds of anarcho anarchism or anarcho tyranny even. Um, but the point being, uh, I think this is a useful exercise. I think anyone that wants to have an impact, um, you know, you should get out of the place where you're from and then maybe you should go back there and uh, bring back the goods, so to speak, for the people um, that don't have the opportunity to get away like that or to go gain resources in somewhere else. And you'll see this even in small towns, you know. I'm from the Midwest, uh, that's, you know, flyover country and lots of people uh, will leave the place where they're from, they will go into the big cities, they will gather resources, they will build their power base, and then they will come back to the town where they were from or the state where they were from and use all that knowledge and all of those resources that they gain, uh, as well as status and other experience, um, to improve the city where they where they came from. So this is a common trend. Um, and really what I'm doing is sort of just a more macro version of the thing that a lot of people already do inside of their own uh, polities. Um, so I just wanted to leave you that. This is, with that, these are the thoughts that I have on sort of the politics of distance. I do think it is your duty to ultimately return to the hearth, to ultimately return to the place where you're from and to try to renew it, right? It is the individual's job to renew the state. So um, yeah, anyway, I wanted to leave you with that. Uh, I got a new webcam here today, so I just wanted to try that out. Uh, I know the lighting in here isn't the greatest, but it is a hotel room, so not exactly my setup. But anyway, thank you and I'll see you guys later.